Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is, um, oh, what day is it? Um, Tuesday, April the 19th of 2016, and what we're looking at is a, um, laptop that I bought about, uh, I want to say two months ago. Um, this has pretty much become my primary vintage gaming laptop, and the reasons for that I will explain momentarily, but first, um, this is a Dell Latitude C600. Now you may recall um, that in the latter part of the year 2014, um, I did a video or two about a um, very similar laptop that I had to this. Um, it was a Dell Latitude C610, which I wound up um, having to sell for um, reasons that are hard to explain, but um, anyway, um, but um, a couple of months ago, I found this on eBay for a really, really good price. Um, it worked. All that was missing was the um, hard drive and the um, optical drive. But um, I happened to um, not only have a hard drive for it, but I also had a, um, a Dell Latitude C-Series DVD-ROM drive for, um, that would work with it, which um, works just fine in it. And not only that, I also have a floppy drive for it as well, which again also works. So um, for only like twenty or thirty dollars I was able to get a fully functional um, vintage laptop going and it works just fine. Um, the uh, and let's uh, go over the uh, ports on it. Okay on the front we have the battery on the left here and on the right in the um, C bay, the expansion bay, we have another battery. I'll explain that phenomena in a moment. Okay. On the right we have a speaker, a um, infrared, got your LEDs up here as well as um, headphone and microphone, dial-up modem, ethernet, um, TV out, which is um, an S video connector. We got a fan. We'll move to the back. And um, we get a um, serial port, um, which I actually have plans for um, pretty soon. We have a parallel port, docking station connector. No, I do not have a docking station for this. We got another fan. PS2 mouse and keyboard connector, one USB 1.1 connector, VGA out power connector, and on the left side we get two um, PCMCIA um, slots, complete with the blanks. Hard drive, um, which is a 60 gigabyte hard drive I added myself, Kensington lock slot, and the uh, left speaker. And we're back on the tripod. Actually, first, um, let's open the lid. And you'll see that it is in really good condition. Yes, that's right. It looks almost brand new, except for a few little scuffs here and there. But yeah, it's a um, really, really nice vintage laptop. And we'll go ahead and boot it up right now. Get the camera back on the tripod. Okay, there we go. Position. Okay. All right. Let's fire it up. First, we'll go into um, the BIOS and see what kind of craziness we got going on there. Okay. Actually, I need to turn the brightness up as high as it can go, huh? Okay, uh, time and date is correct. This does have a working CMOS battery. Has a um, 850 MHz um, Intel Pentium 3. Um, right now it's only running at um, 700 MHz thanks to um, Intel Speedstep because I'm running on battery at the moment. Um, 
256k of level 2 cache, um, 512 megabytes of system memory, I highly doubt that's original, an ATI M3 video card with um, 8 megabytes of video memory, and here's the part that makes me prefer the Latitude C600 over the Latitude C610. The Latitude C600 comes with an ESS Maestro 3 audio controller. You see on the um, Latitude C610, one thing I never really cared about it was um, it had a um, crystal audio chip on it instead of the ESS Maestro. The difference there is that the um, crystal audio only has um, the standard um, MIDI um, sound that you would get on a weenie modern computer. And not only that, it has absolutely no support for DOS gaming at all. However, the ESS Maestro 3 on this um, Latitude C600 not only um, has um, really nice um, wavetail, wa wavetail, I just made up a word there, <laughs> not only does it have a um, nice wavetable MIDI, it also has um, s um, audio support for most DOS games. Um, so a lot of times the, um, the music may sound a little bit different than you may um, be used to, but for having it on the go like this, it's a it's not a bad sacrifice. Okay, we currently have no diskette drive installed, and a battery in the modular bay. Um, more on that later. We'll go into um, next page. That's the boot order there. Uh, more stuff there basic um, device configuration for your serial port and the um, infrared port. Infrared port is currently disabled. I'm going to keep it that way because I have absolutely no need to use the infrared on here because let's be honest here, infrared was not the best way to transfer data. Think of it as an early version of Bluetooth, except Bluetooth actually works properly. <laughs> okay, go to the next page. As you can see, we have two batteries in here. Um, and I'll go ahead and explain um, why we got two batteries in here. Um, when I bought this laptop, um, I was um, thinking, you know, if it has a, it's probably not going to have a working battery. If it does, cool. But not only does, does it have a working battery, it has a working healthy battery. The night I got this, I was able to play Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise on here, as well as a couple of other games, on a full battery. With no um, power connection at all. That is impressive for a laptop this age, because if you get uh, any laptop um, this age or older, chances are the battery is not going to be working. And, um... And you know, as much as I love my um, Compaq Armada 1575, especially since it's um, my preferred era for computers, it's impossible to find working batteries for them nowadays. But not only does this Latitude have a um, working battery, you can still buy new batteries for these. Now granted, they are the Chinese ones, but they still, but you can still get new batteries for them if you need them. Meaning that if you want a um, vintage laptop to play old games on, on the go, I would say that a laptop like this, like the Latitude C600, like, th like this one right here, is the way to go. Since, since you can still buy batteries for them. And I think it is awesome. Power management, system security. Okay, we'll get out of this and boot into Windows, which is Windows 98. This laptop can happily um, run Windows 2000 if you want it, but I prefer to use um, Windows 98 on here because it has a little bit better um, support for older games, and plus it gives me um, the ability to run DOS games as well. What's hot out here? <laughs> Come on. Takes a little bit to, to turn on. 
once it does, it zips along pretty well. the hard drive clicking away. Okay, we're getting there. All right. I do have this set up to work with a um, virtual um, Windows 2000 domain, but we're currently not connected to the um, network, so we'll just tell it to cancel out of that. I always got to use the Utopia sound scheme on Windows 98. It's just the right thing to do for me. <laughs> okay, we're just about at the desktop now. Actually, we are at the desktop, just waiting for it to finish uploading a few more things. All right, okay, I think we're ready to go now. But yeah, this is Windows 98. We're all familiar with Windows 98. Very good operating system. Let's see how much battery we got. We got 80% remaining. I don't know if that's com for both batteries combined or just the primary battery, but um, like I said, with two work two fully functional batteries in here, this is perfect for um, taking your old games on the go. In the start menu here, see what we got installed. Got um, After Dark. Playroom from Broderbund, an old version of C Cleaner, believe it or not. Cyberlink Power DVD, since um, I have a DVD drive that works with it. Need for Speed 3, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, Tonka Construction 2, Lego Island, Magic Disc, which allows me to mount disc images, um, CD images that is. Bunch of Maxis games like Full Tilt Pinball, SimCity 2000, and all that good stuff. Microsoft Bob. Uh, we got Work Suite 2002 on here. We got Microsoft Return of Arcade, Midtown Madness, Revenge of Arcade, and Monster Truck Madness. Office 2002, Plus for Windows 98. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> the um, Gus series of games. My utilities. Print Key 2000, um, hard to explain what that is. QuickTime, Sonic 3D Blast, The Incredible Machine and 3D Ultra Pinball, Sonic CD, and um, software for a um, wireless card I use on here sometimes. And Windows Media Player 9. Go into System Properties. Dale Latitude C600, registered to me, going to Device Manager, um, the uh, floppy controller is disabled since there's no floppy drive installed at the moment, ATI Mobility M3 video card, um, 3Com 56K modem, Synaptics touchpad, 3Com Ethernet adapter, a um, Texas Instruments uh, PCMCIA controller, the SCSI controller for um, the Magic ISO. It's not actual hardware, but it's there. ESS Maestro 3i, uh, chipset mumbo jumbo, and um, the um, USB controller. Okay, um, let's go into my computer here. I want to show something that I've done with this that's kind of cool. Um, you'll notice that we have two partitions here, one labeled OS and one labeled games. I um, since I have a 60 gigabyte hard drive in here, I have a lot of space to spare. So what I did was I um, I uh, partitioned it into um, two partitions. I um, I have a tw 20 I have a 35.7 um, gigabyte um, partition for the operating system and all the normal Windows stuff, and a 20 gigabyte partition to store games on, including DOS games, the uh, Humongous Entertainment games, and the Gus games, and Living Books games, and all that good stuff. So, um, that way if I'm um, away from home, 
or in bed or something, I don't have to worry about carrying a b whole bunch of CDs with me to, to just to play um, uh, like Fatty Bear or Putt Putt. It's already copied onto the hard drive and ready to go. And with that, um, I'm going to pause for a moment to go eat supper, and I will be right back. I just got finishing supper, and um, while I was eating, I realized that I left the um, laptop out here running um, all by itself on battery. So, um, uh, see how much battery we wasted. Uh, uh, down to 75% now. It's, it's not too bad. Um, anyway, um, I guess it's now time to show off the gaming capabilities of this with some very underpowered games for a computer like this. <laughs> so, um, I have a special folder here with um, shortcuts to all those games you saw on the um, game partition. And um, we got Arthur's Teacher Trouble, Fatty Bear, all that good stuff. So, uh, most of these games require a 640x480 um, resolution with um, 256 colors. Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> so, um, we're going to dial that back down to that just right now. Um, and as you may be able to see, panel stretching on here is beautiful. So, uh, let's, uh, let's play some Putt-Putt, um, joins the parade. Okay, you may have noticed one little issue with this laptop um, just now. The sound on it is not that good. Now, I did mention that um, MIDI support and DOS support is perfect on here. However, the sound output is a little bit muffled. I don't know if you'll be able to tell um, with this being a YouTube video and all, but yeah, it is a little bit muffled. Even when you plug in um, external speakers or headphones, it's still muffled. So, I guess the um, the audio chip on here um, doesn't output the best that it could. But, you know, the pros still greatly outweigh the cons on here. And I'll, gl and I'll gladly accept all this. Anyway, let's play a little bit of Putt-Putt. Eat the fly. Actually, recently um, bought a uh, an original magazine ad for this game when it first came out in the early '90s. I have it hanging up on the wall next to my Packard Bell. It's pretty cool. I bought it off eBay. I guess it was about fifteen dollars or so. And there's hardly any mention of um, Humongous Entertainment on there either, which is kind of interesting. And the flies back, we just killed them. What's up with that? Yeah, it's absolutely playable. Yeah, 
For some reason, I used to enjoy that radio ad when I was little. <laughs> Gotta love it when they have kids portraying kids. Oh yeah, and you also get a little track point on here as well. It's not as good as um, a ThinkPad track point, but it's there if you ever want to try it. And it doesn't work for some reason. You know what? You stink. I want you to go um, into a corner and think about what you've done. It plays absolutely flawlessly. Always got to do this. And that somehow signals a shark. <laughs> Offer it a good 401k. Or just do that. We are, but we're going to close out this because I actually plan on playing that this evening and I want to save some of it for myself on the Packard Bell, that is. Okay. What else can we um, enjoy tonight? Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and switch back into uh, true colors. I see a true colors doing something, something, something. Okay, um, let's do a canyon test just to show off um, the MIDI on here. Like I said earlier, on the um, when you have a Latitude C610, and even when you're running Windows 98 on it, the MIDI is sounds exactly like it is on um, a modern computer. It uses the Microsoft um, Wavetable. So, yeah. Kind of lackluster. However, on the um, C600, you get true MIDI and it's a special type of wavetable no FM synthesis, but it still sounds pretty good. Alright, um, let's uh, check out the, um, the DOS capabilities. Reboot into um, MS DOS mode. And there we are. Now let's go to our, to our game um, partition, which is drive D. And uh, we'll go into the DOS directory, which is where I keep all my DOS games. Let's see what we got here. Uh, I got a couple of um, goodies to choose from here. Um, let's uh, let's uh, let's try a little bit of Jill the Jungle.
again, the music is going to sound a little bit different um, from a regular computer like a Packard Bell or something, but as long as it actually plays and you get music and sound. Okay, having to play from an odd angle due to the camera. I love this game. I actually remember playing this on the original Packard Bell back in 1996, I want to say. I guess I must have downloaded it off of um, the AOL Games channel. So yeah, not a bad game at all. It plays perfectly. This is something that you're not able to do on the um, Latitude C610. If you want to play DOS games, you got to go back to the C600 instead. It's a little bit older, but you know what? Does it's pretty much the exact same thing, except you get better legacy support, I guess, for older games like this. I found a shortcut. A shortcut that's completely pointless, but... Alright, we'll go to another game now. Uh... Okay, let's play a little bit of... Um... Commander Keen 4. Another game that runs just fine on here. One tiny little issue with this game is, is that there's a little bit of graphical tearing. But it doesn't render the game unplayable. Sound and music, again, work just fine. But yeah, there is a little bit of tearing. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But again, game is still completely playable. Now I do have to say this, if you're gonna, if you want to do some serious DOS gaming, get a real desktop, Pentium, uh, uh, original Pentium, 486, 386, or anything like that. The only reason I, I'm doing it on on the um, on a Pentium 3 laptop is because portability. For the sake of portability, I'm willing to make a few sacrifices because I already have plenty of um, other computers that can play this stuff even better. I will tell you one game that will not run on here is anything from the original Jazz Jack Rabbit series. Like Jazz Jack Rabbit 1, the Holiday Hair games. They will not run at all on here. Um, in fact, they will not run on anything that has a Pentium 2 or newer. My reasoning for that is, I guess, um, Pentium 2s, Pentium 3s, newer processors like that use some kind of um, processor instruction that Jazz Jackrabbit does not agree with. Which is a shame, but oh well. You know, I actually didn't start playing um, these Commander King games until about a year ago. I'm pathetic, aren't I? <laughs> They're pretty cool, though, especially this one. Okay, I want to 
kill myself just for one reason. That. I love the sound it makes when you die. That. Okay, let's get out of here. And we'll try out, um... A Road Geek Classic. Oh, I wonder why I didn't do the intro. Oh well. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for my for me to torture myself with Sky Road's Christmas special. Music plays just fine on here. Sounds a little bit different, but I actually quite like it. There you go. I mean, how do I? Okay, there we go. <laughs> and we're off to a roaring stop. Song. Don't give me any of that crap. Oh, it'll work. Yeah, I'm not doing too good, I guess, because I'm playing from a weird angle due to the camera being in my way. Hopefully you're being able to see this all right. You know what? Enough of this. <laughs> I'm not going to torture myself any longer. But yeah, as you can see, for the most part, DOS games do work just fine. Um, except for a few little games here and there, like um, Jazz Jackrabbit does not work on here. Um, another game that doesn't work on here um, is The Secret of Monkey Island. Um, it just... Uh, do I even have it on here? Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> it does work. We're witnessing a miracle here, folks. I, I could have sworn this didn't work on here. Must have been thinking of another computer. But we're not going to be able to play it, though, because I don't have a, do a uh, mouse driver installed for DOS. Yay. So, we will, uh... How do I get out of here without a mouse? Obviously not like that. Okay, you know what? We'll just control alt delete <laughs> And I will be right back. All right, we're now back in Windows. Um, after all that tomfoolery we were doing, um, playing those games, let's see how much battery we have left. Last we checked it uh, was at, uh, before we started this, was 75%. We're now down to 67%, so not bad at all. Again, I don't know if that's just for the primary battery or both batteries combined. I had to guess, maybe just the primary, but... Um, Anyway, one more thing I want to show before I call it a video. Um, for those who don't know yet, um, a few weeks ago I purchased a, um, a rather interesting computer. The reason you haven't seen it on the channel yet is because I don't own it yet. <laughs> that computer is a Apple IIe. This is a computer I've been casually kind of wanting for a while. Um, the only reason I want anything like this is because in my kindergarten classroom in 1995 and 1996, um, our classroom had an Apple IIe along with a um, Macintosh LC2 or 3, I want to say. But um, we did have an Apple 
um, 2E in the classroom and um, didn't really use it a whole lot, but um, I do have maybe just a little bit of nostalgia for it just because um, that's what we had in my kindergarten classroom. <laughs> and plus they're kind of cool, but anyway, um, I won't be getting it until sometime in May. Um, due to the person that I bought it from, who is a good friend of mine. Um, he's currently off at school right now and won't be able to get to that computer until May. So, anyway, um, one thing I want to do with that Apple IIe is bootstrap it. And what I mean by that is I want to boot it into special software to where I can um, write um, Apple II disk images with. Um, B Bishop PCM has a couple of videos about the whole process on his channel if you want to check it out. But um, it requires a um, serial cable to go from a modern, uh, well, a more modern computer um, like this to a um, to to an Apple II. And um, I do have the cable, and I did get the software for it. It's a little program called ADT Pro. Here it is, right here. Obviously, I haven't really used it yet, except for um, opening it up and uh, <laughs> seeing what it looks like. And there it is. But it's there, ready for when I do get the um, Apple IIe in about a month from now. And um, that's another reason why I am. Um, I'm glad to have this laptop because it has a serial port on it that I can do this with and I'm also very happy that ADT Pro works on Windows 98 which makes life a little bit easier for me. Alright, um, I guess that's all there is to really show about this laptop. I am very happy with it. Again, it is a very good laptop for playing old computer games on the go. For the simple fact that you can still get brand new batteries for it. And that is definitely worth the price of admission on here. Yes, it does have its limits with certain things, but again, in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons. So we'll go ahead and shut it down. And this is Billy Core signing off.